Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I'm going to read some more, uh, still on chapter two, uh, in uh, the book Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution uh, by Tamplin and Goffman. But I thought I'd show you this. I, ha I had this card made up so I could go to the Post Ignorance Project events and not give out my business card. But that's my contact information. And that's kind of my mottos in life. Happiness is resistance and love is greater than fear. Because I really believe that the people in power want us to be unhappy because they know the power of love is much, much, much stronger than the power of fear. And so they want to keep us in the fear mode so that we can not exercise the power of love. Which is why they, you know, knocked off the Beatles. So anyways, I'm going to read from this book. Still Chapter 2, Biological Effects of Radiation. It's the book. We're on the uh, subtitle, uh, on page 24. Earlier optimistic reports were erroneous. No shit. <clears throat> As we indicated in the earlier sections of this discussion, the more recent data on the biological effects of radiation are generally tending to demonstrate that the original optimistic opinions of the effects were wrong. For example, we now realize the extreme radio sensitivity to the developing fetus in utero. To a considerable extent, the existing guidelines were based upon the effects of radiation on adults. And the data of Stewart and others are now demonstrating that the developing fetus is from 25 to 150 times more sensitive than an adult. In addition, the data are suggesting that leukemia is not the most sensitive form of cancer with respect to radiation, but that indeed all cancers which occur in the population more frequently than leukemia are induced by radiation in proportion to their occurrence rate. The early estimates of genetic effects of radiation were based upon studies of the fruit fly. Unfortunately, the extension, the extension of the genetic studies to the mammal, the mouse, revealed that the genetic mutation rate per unit dose of radiation was much higher than observed in the fruit fly. This should certainly be a cause for, a, I'm sorry, this should certainly be a cause for caution in extrapolation of the mouse genetic data to humans. Finally, the data, are, the data which are now coming in from biological experimentation are suggesting that the most radiosensitive portion of the biological system was overlooked in setting the original standards. This part of the biological system is represented by the chromosomes, that is, the packages of genes. Radiation can affect genetic material in two major ways. One way, which is the one that has been given the most attention with respect to genetic and somatic effects of radiation, is that of producing a point mutation. By this process, irrida irradiation changes the structure of the composition of a single gene that is, a single hereditary unit. Through this, process is determined, through this process is determined the production of a point mutation. Damaging effect of radiation on chromosomes. On the other hand, it is now abundantly clear that the radiation can also affect the chromosomes. By this process, the radiation is able to alter or move from the genetic material not a single gene, but a large number of genes. The developing evidence on chromosomes and the effect of radiation on chromosomes suggests that this process may represent the major me mechanism through which radiation produces its damage such as cancer induction in the irradiated person and many forms of disease and debilities in his offspring and future generations. Hmm. In other words, a whole new mechanism for the potential biological effects of radiation is now evolving 
a mechanism that may represent a far greater susceptibility of man than any other previous mechanism proposed. What should be shocking is that we are only now beginning to learn about the massive disease and death producing effects of alterations of chromosomes. A body of knowledge beginning to be accumulated after the experts, totally ignorant of such a phenomena, had already decided on so-called acceptable doses of radiation. And what does the UN committee have to say about this new body of evidence? And it shows us, this is what it says. I'll read that. Present knowledge of dosage effect on the induction of chromosome anom anomalies is too scanty to predict a doubling dose. There are some indications that monkey chromosomes, and hence perhaps those of other primates, are more radiosensitive than those of mice. The committee is of the opinion that ionizing radiation would increase the preva prevalence of developmental congenital formations, malformations, and a serious and, and of serious constitutional disorders, but no quantitative estimates can now be made. We think it is extremely important at this juncture to point out that scientists are not omnis omniscient. Excuse me, omniscient. I'll say that again. We think it's extremely important at this juncture to point out that scientists are not omniscient. Though we have a considerable body of information at our disposal, we can never be certain that we have made all the pertinent observations that are necessary to determine the outcome of a particular series of events. We must always keep in mind that we do not necessarily have all the significant facts before us when we are asked to make recommendations as to whether something which is planned will not adversely affect man or his environment. The recent developments that occurred with thalidomide represents a useful example of this respect. As a consequence of the rather tragic use of thalidomide, thel the drug testing proce procedures have now been altered. Following the thel 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 I'm sorry about that. Following the thalidomide disclosure, we now find many drugs listed in the physician's desk reference that have a pregnancy warning which were not previously recorded. In fact, a ridiculous, as ridiculous as it may seem, drugs in the physician's desk reference that were initially used primarily for the treatment of nausea in early pregnancy have a warning against their use now in early pregnancy. Hmm. It would seem that we have a similar situation now with respect to the biological effects of radiation. Subsequent to the establishment of the radiation exposure guidelines, a whole new body of experimental data concerning the radiosensitivity of chromosomes has been evolving. Recent results reported by a group of John Hopkins University may demonstrate quite well the importance of the new body of data with respect to the biological effects of radiation. The John Hopkins data indicate that between one and two rads delivered in the first 30 weeks in life of utero, in utero life will produce severe genetic damage. And in this case, it appears that it appears to be chromosomal damage to the fetal germ cell. As a result of this damage, 50% of the female conceptuses of women who were themselves irradiated as fetuses will be killed. This is a very startling observation and other confirmations and other confirmations of this observation are necessary and highly desirable. It is an effect the magnitude of which far exceeds anything that had previously been predicted concerning the genetic effects of radiation. How serious are the genetic effects of radiation? No one knows. It is impossible 
it is possible that exposure to the present allowable level could result in a 5 to 50 percent increase in, in the death rate, producing some 150,000 to 1,500,000 additional deaths each year in a future population of 300 million people. Moreover, the evidence suggests that there would be over and above the fatal diseases a 5% to 50% increase in such crippling diseases as diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and schizophrenia. Wow! With the present radiation guidelines, we will be practicing an insidious form of sadism and genocide. That is the end of chapter 2. So I'll end here and I hope this isn't you know, I know that this information is scaring people because a friend of mine told me it's scaring her. But I encourage people not to be afraid. Like, I really believe that there's no need to be afraid of it because we're going to have to learn how to live with it. It is going to affect all of us, but we just need to learn how to deal with it. And I believe that there are ways that we're not, that they're not even trying to figure it out. So anyways, I'm going to end here. Ciao, you guys. Sweet dreams, and I'll talk to you tomorrow night.